what's more important? Would you say is it is it more so based on whether the players like is it is it the player is it the best player that wins the finals like the best group of players that wins the finals yeah. or is it the players that are, are in the best rhythm at the right time that wins the finals? What would you say to that? Can I get an example? So, like for example, let's say because you wouldn't cons- would you consider like overall teams right? Would you consider the Mavs better team than the Celtics? No, nobody would say I'm that, close. right? Close. But but if the Mavs were in a great rhythm like they were against the Timberwolves or whoever it was, they chances are they would be up in the series or tied or whatever wherever it might be. So is it the best team that always wins with the best players on that team, or is it the team that it, that has a rhythm going up against other teams? I want to reword the rhythm if that's okay. Okay. Because the most locked in team will always win most okay. of the time, and we've seen we saw the Celtics last year. So you're we're taking not, out rhythm for locked in. Right. Okay. The Celtics last year were not locked in in the conference finals. Go down 0-3. Right. And then you get all the way down to a game seven. They come all the way back mm-hmm. and Tatum rolls his ankle and they lose the series. Mm-hmm. Right. You see this year, the Nuggets were not locked in against both the Lakers and the Timberwolves. Yeah. You waste all your energy trying to come back into the series. And after game five, they, that was all they had. Mm-hmm. And they just ran out of energy. So this really, I think if both teams had just been locked in, this would have been the second year in a row of Nuggets Celtics. And I think the NBA finals probably wouldn't have been this much of a snooze fest essentially yeah. yeah but i do think it's having have if you're locked in you're gonna have a good rhythm yeah because if you're not locked in you're completely out of whack and always around yeah so i think that's kind of the thing with it for me at least obviously i think in the conference finals and the nba finals talent really needs to display because okay. that's when every single possession matters so much more basketball iq kicks in to like that like to its highest um capability or capacity and i think with that Mm -hmm. it just it's like a domino effect it really just trickles down to everyone yeah so So. you're saying what are you saying so in short in short i do think talent plays a role but at the end of the day it comes down you need to be locked in okay you need to be locked in i agree with that partially i would say it's more so it more so leans on the better team the better talent right based on what i saw last night I saw Derek White, who is their fourth slash fifth option. Mm-hmm. He was the guy taking shots at the last second in the shot clock. And yeah. he was making threes mm-hmm. last second in the shot clock. Like, who's your fifth option on, on the maps? Like, Derek Jones? Like, there's yeah. no way he's taking that shot. So, like, That's, I think the team yeah. the best talent, I think they're always going to win. That's why I compared the, the Celtics and the Nuggets to San Antonio. Because they play team basketball. Right. There's no... Just give it to Luca and Kyrie and pray. Or if you give it to Maxi Kleba, you have to pray for it to go in. Right. Yeah, all five guys on both of those teams can shoot the lights out. And if you if you're in a clutch situation and you either have the ball in Jokic's hand or in Brown's hands, I'm chilling. Or yeah. even even the fifth options. If you have the ball, if you're if you're low in the shot clock, and you have Derek White and KCP, easy like. Yeah. Like there's confidence that they'll make them compared to a Derek Jones or any other unproven fifth option. Like these guys are winners. And I think you're really seeing that from Boston. And Mm -hmm. that's why I just don't like the media in in the sense of like Jason Tatum's playing great team basketball. Yeah. He's not shooting great. He really hasn't been for most of the past couple playoffs, but you see him getting double digit rebounds. You see him getting eight, nine assists. You see him. Yeah. You're seeing him play defense and, you know, at the end of the day, the media's going to get pissed off because they have, they have a points per game kink. But, you know, at the end of the day, there's more to basketball than that. Yeah. You know, you just you win the game by playing as a team, and that's what 100%. Boston's doing right now. now let me, let me ask you this, Tyler. Um, what would you – what kind of play are you seeing from the Celtics, and what is causing all the success that they're having on offense specifically? Who oh, – um. I think you're just seeing a lot more confidence. You're seeing them run their sets rather than just a lot of broken plays. I think we've seen that a lot in the playoffs from a lot of teams. Yeah. And I think when when you're moving the ball as well as they are, having different guys bring the ball up the floor, like sometimes it's Drew Holiday, sometimes it's Brown, sometimes it's Horford. Like it, it, There's a, a lot of sharing the wealth. Mm-hmm. And I think when you have the confidence to shoot the ball no matter who it is, it's working wonders. Like mm-hmm. when Christoph Porzingis is pulling up over guys from the foul line 
like they're not even there. Mm-hmm. Browns uh, being a th- the Browns just scoring at all three levels at just an elite uh, an elite clip. Um, Tatum is just his gravity alone. Even though he's not shooting the ball well, is getting other guys open. He's putting them in the right spots. Yeah. Um, Horford is just three and D, just bread and butter. Yeah. And just even if you look at the bench, just like you're getting just impactful plays, not necessarily scoring, but you're yeah. getting those plays from guys like Sam Hauser, guys like Peyton Pritchard, right? And Derek and can't can't forget Derek White. I mean, Derek yeah. White's just kind of doing it all. Yeah. And look, I, I think I think this is the first time we've really seen that sense of urgency from Joe Missoula's guys. And I think that was, I, I don't think that was the reason why they lost the finals. I think they ran out of gas mm-hmm. because they had to go through back-to-back seven-game series to get to the finals. Mm-hmm. This year, they lost two games so far. They are 14-2 wow. in this playoff run alone. And they already won like 64 games of basketball this yeah. year or something along those lines. Yeah. So for me... I mean, they're just putting on a clinic. Yeah, I think it's very similar to what we saw last year, just not a, not uh, not like record breaking stuff, mm-hmm. right? You're not seeing two guys drop triple doubles in the same game, mm-hmm. but you're just seeing just them pouring it on, yeah, and just being pests defensively, and you know they're really getting under their skin. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree with that. I think you're just seeing like great team basketball. Going going yeah. back to your point, like the Spurs, you're seeing like Spurs type level. Yeah, maybe not that level. No, not that. <laughs> not that level, not level. But something it's Spurs esque. Yeah. That's what it is. Like you're seeing like a whole lot of drill penetration, which creates open shots for threes. Right. Swinging it around the court, like they look really good, and 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 the confidence, not just in their own game, but their confidence in each other's game. You're seeing that. That's that's why Tatum's passing the ball to Derek White, who gets the last shot right. in the shot clock, exactly. because he believes in him. Yeah. And and those are the teams that win championships. So it's what it does, man. I'll take my victory lap when the time comes. But there's two guys on the middle and the right of your screen that said Mavericks in seven. Are you sticking or are you changing? Because I, I you go first. I, I think I might, I might, I might stick. I might not. I'll let y'all know in a minute. But we'll go to um, you first. I can go first if you want. Yeah, go first, bro. We don't want we go don't ahead. want radio silence. You, you go okay. first. So I'll say, oh man, it's so hard to stick with your pick, especially after seeing Peyton Pritchard hit a half court buzzer beater. <laughs> like stuff like that doesn't happen unless you're gonna win the series. But right. I still gotta go Mavs in seven. Oh wow. I have to I have to hold to my pick. That is balls. I have to AF. hold to my pick. Look, Mavs are gonna win the next two games in Dallas. Mark my words. Okay. Okay. That's fair. Anthony, go. Oh. Got to push you for an answer here, bro. Shoot it. <laughs> I'm going to stick with Mavs, but I'm going to do Mavs in six. They win the next four. Wow. And completely blow it off. That is wild. <laughs> oh, so, so a complete turnaround. They win all four next. Kyrie, the Celtics fans set Kyrie off. Uh-huh. They win four in a row. And the Celtics are, are actually frauds. Like I've been saying the whole playoffs, yeah. which they're proving to me they're not. But I'm gonna stick by my yeah. gut. But I'm gonna take one game okay. off of it, and as they win next four in a row. Okay. And what about you, Tyler? That's ballsy as fuck. <laughs> now I'm debating between sticking at Celtics and six or going to Celtics and five. Oof. I don't know because I thought they were gonna lose game two. They're undefeated on the road, but I still think the Mavs got one win in them. But game three or game four? It has to be game. Well, it could be game four. Yeah. It could very well be game four. It could be game three, too. I think you're going to get a fluky game three performance from the Mavs, and I think they'll win. PJ goes like three for five. Yeah. From three. I think the Celtics are due for another brick fest. Yeah. Yeah. But I think I think for now, I'll stick with Celtics and six. Okay. I, don't like, I don't really like changing my predictions. It, had someone on the Mavs gotten injured, I probably would have said Celtics and five, but I'll stick for now. Mm-hmm. And look, right now, I think... My finals MVP pick of Jalen Brown is off to a very good start because I think it's quite clear, even though he's the betting favorite, I do not think Tatum is winning. And yeah, guys like Holiday and Porzingis have cases, but Brown's been consistently good in both games. Okay. So I think Holiday was great in game two. Porzingis yeah. was great in game one. They were good in the other game, but I think Brown's been, he's just locked, More bro. consistent, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On he is both a, sides. He is a man on a mission. He really is. And he's the current highest paid player in the NBA, or at least one That's of them. That's crazy. Yep. So, yeah. And Joe Mazzulla, credit to him. 
doing yeah. an outstanding job. I, I put some trash on Bo- his name Bo- earlier on, but he's <laughs> Bo- doing good. Yeah, both head coaches. I don't know. That challenge from Kidd yesterday was very questionable. Yeah. I think both head coaches are doing oh. good, but they gotta, Mavs got to pull back for yeah. Kidd to get something going. It's going to take a miracle, my friends. Four but in a row. Four Mavs. in a row is wild. Yeah, that's crazy. Four the the last row. time that happened was the 2021 finals, but that was just a fraud off. So, like, yeah. who won that in 20? That was the Bucks and the Suns. So two teams that should not have even been in the Suns finals. Suns were up to nothing. Yeah, the Suns won the first two who games. Who's supposed at home. to be there in the West? It should have been. I'm trying to remember who was there that year. The Jazz were the one seed. Yeah. Then Phoenix was the two seed, the three seed. I'm trying to remember who it was. That playoff feels like. Oh, that was the the Nuggets without Jamal Murray. Yeah. And that, I think the Clippers should have made the finals that Clippers? year. I think it should have been Clippers Nets. Should have been the battle of the little brothers, bro. Were the Clippers in the Western Conference Finals? Yes. Yeah. That was when Pat Bev pushed Chris Paul. Mm, yeah. yeah. So, Man, I missed that. Okay. No, but Should have been Clippers Nets. Yeah. Clippers Nets would have fired, bro. Yeah. Oh, man. Hurts. But PG would have had one. It would have been okay. Clippers in four. Clippers in four is nuts. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I don't but, know what it would have been. Uh, no, the Nets probably. If the Nets had gotten past Milwaukee healthy, we probably would have swept the last eight games. Because we were on our way to sweeping Milwaukee. That's a bold statement. Yeah. If if Swept. they would have won, if they would have won, Katie would have stayed. The league, the league were terrified of the Nets, bro. <laughs> they were terrified. So that's that. I'll take that participation trophy. Yeah. Of, you know, hang the banner, terrified of the Nets. 